Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Innovation. I'm Mats. This time, finally, I have to say, I got my hands on the Xpeng G9, which is the P7's big brother. So I have borrowed this from Hansen uh, or Shelley at home. Yet again, another car from them. And, and it's big. It's almost five meter long, it's probably two meter wide. It's a Model X size. But looks more massive in a way. It's not quite as long as the Hong Chi HS9. And nor is it quite as long as I also think the, the um, Kia EV9 is bigger than this. Yes, it is bigger than this, much bigger, because that has more seats and more space. But this is more equipment. Uh, this is the performance version. It costs entirely certain what it costs internationally in Norway. I think it starts from around 55,000 euros. And this one is 70, 75 maybe, roughly thereabouts. And you have a massage in all four seats, you have uh, reclining rear seats. The reclining rear seats are standard, by the way. Massage, massaging seats in the rear is part of the comfort package, which is basically the only option you can get on this thing. The paint color and stuff. Which I, I like this, uh, this uh, flat green. It's nice, kind of suits the car. I've been using it a little bit now, and it's really sweet driving. There's a bit of tire noise, running big tires. Yes, there is a creak coming from the back in the car. I have no idea what it is. The Porsche Taycan I was out in also had a creak, so there is that. It has 550 horses, and well, the salesman wasn't certain of the torque figure, but I can tell you it is a lot. This does not do not 100 kilometers in, I think it was 3.9 or whatever it was. It's, it's, it's quick. Even in standard mode, it's pretty quick. In sports mode, it's, it doesn't, it, it's not rip snorting more or less kind of kick you in the face quick. It, it's, it's a slight build up and a slight delay on the power delivery but that's okay really it doesn't hurt anyone and then it just builds and builds and builds and you can do decent speeds in, in, in this and it's still quiet I mean, it's about as quiet as uh, quite in 140 kilometers as it is in 50 kilometers an hour since previously uh, XPeng have been updating their systems and they just now released a new update which allowed you to take down the, the beeping and the bonging from the cameras monitoring your face when you drive. And that's good. I have to say on my short drive from Houghton to here, it hasn't beeped at me at all. Not much. So, yes, well done on that front. Because I know among the other speakers in Ireland have been annoying as the, at the X-Peng and all the some of the Chinese cars binging and bonging, and I've been saying the same thing. Here you have the same as in the Volvo, two steps and you've disabled the EU speed warning. It's good. Not because we're gonna do speeding, why not? I don't condone that. But because, yeah, it can be a bit annoying sometimes. I, can under I understand why it's there, but I'm also glad I can turn it off easily. So we're not gonna fiddle with the screen more than you don't have you didn't plan to stop the Volvo, did you? And in going into the roundabout. Um sound system is from Dynaudio, the Danish people, and it's really good. We had the for my taste I took it out of the uh, out of the dynamic settings and into the into the original setting, sound-wise, and it sounds, it's properly good sound system, this. There's a slight 
inte nöjd. Jag har inte sagt Oh, it has speakers built into the headdress. So it, if you're in Bluetooth phone, for instance, just good. And then I have to bother everybody else in the car with those warnings. How the road works and stuff. And if, you know, sleeping children or whatever. We had a coffee now and we had some testing the car on some, you know, winding roads here. And this is really, really quick. And it firms up properly when you put it into spot now. It lowers and uh, lowers on the on the uh, air suspension, all that stuff. Now, is it a sports car? No, of course not. It's too big and too uh, heavy for that. But it really, really does a good job trying to pretend to be a sports car. I was listening to a song now from a band called The Purple. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Highway Star. This really is a Highway Star. It's big, it's comfortable, it's properly quick. I mean, really quick. It's relatively quiet. The only big gripe I have, apart from the coming from the back there, it's a creaking somewhere. But that's a minor, minor niggle. I can live with that. The other thing is, it's the seating position. If I'm not entirely mistaken, I can't get the steering wheel far enough out and, and close enough to me and low enough. So it's slightly like sitting in a bus or an old Fiat if you want to compare it to that. And it's it's not a big thing, but it's a slight annoyance. It's about the only annoyance I have actually. Most, apart from that, most other things feel proper. Materials are proper, interior are well made. There's almost no cheap feeling surfaces here. There's a few, but not very many. Um, it doesn't ding dong at you. It's a bit of ding dong, ding dongs a little bit, but not very much. And most of the ding dongs comes from the headrest, given that that's where they put the speaker to do that. We now have, what did I say, 332 indicated kilometers. Because you can go here, you push the battery icon on the big screen, and go to the battery screen. So you can change between range or percentage, put it in percentage with 76 percent left, put it in dynamic or WLTP if you want a range readout. So if you put it in WLTP it follows that um, standard there and if you put it in dynam dynamic it probably have a readout. Either a running adjustment or depending on how you last drove, I don't really know. This is a performance version, so either way, if it's around 300, we have, like I said, 76% left. I don't really think that would indicate at least 400 kilometers. 550, I think, the salesman said, official range figures. So if you trundle along, Particularly in Norway, if you can get one for the 500 out of this one. That's not bad at all. The massage function here is fabulous. And even massage in all four seats. What not to like? And you have a front given. Imagine that. I mean, tell that to Audi and the big XM, which is a big car with not that much space. This is a big car with decent amount of space, after all. So here we are then, on the motorway, doing motorway speeds and it's fairly quiet in here it's not apps I think the Hong Chi might be quieter than this but I'm quite certain the big Mercedes are quieter but it's not really intrusive and this is running on big 255 whatever it was Michelin Pilot Sport um, Force and and it's it, it's kind of it's sporty tires and it's wide it's big 21 inch uh, wheels on this one so there's a bit of a tire noise not very much wind noise and as for the back seats and the cargo space in the car the cargo space is good and you have a front you have a big uh, boot you have some some space under the floor for the uh, charge cable and stuff. And uh, the rear seats, you you have almost the same controls as you do in the front. You have a button for the massage and for the footrest, and uh, and and you can tilt the you can rec 
recline the back of it. So that's just the reclining is standard, by the way, which is just absurd. Massage in the rear is in the comfort package, and there's plenty of space. The only thing that feels a little bit cheap in the back seats are the cup holders, because they are they are inserted in the armrest, and they're this. Um, origami Porsche style that just flips out and they they feel a little bit flimsy and cheap but apart, apart from that everything else is just great leather is soft and feels pretty solid uh, sit comfortable you have plenty of space you have a massage going in the back if you want to you can move the uh, the passengers um, seat if you want to do that this is a traditional luxury car in very many ways and uh, if you want a Mercedes or a BMW with the same amount of equipment it's gonna cost a lot more than this I don't have the price in my head, but it's gonna cost at least 30-40% more than this. That's, uh, yeah, if you can even equip it at this, to this level, I don't, I'm not entirely certain you can in all of them. Well, as for the interior here in the front, most of the surfaces are padded, soft touch anyway, if not necessarily padded. They don't feel cheap, a few of them that feel a little bit cheap, but not, not very much. And those are not places that you normally interact with anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, your instrument cluster is easy to read. It's been 147 kilometers since it took since last charge. And we have 66% on the battery. Just okay. I'm not worried at all about the range in this one. And it is, it's, it's a 98 kilowatt hour battery pack, by the way. So it's Big pack. We have a consumption of 225 watt hours per kilometer, which is perfectly okay. It's a big car, fat car. It's running on big fat tires, mind you. That doesn't help. But the screen here is very intuitive, relatively quick, easy to use. It has a bunch of of, of um, quick uh, quick buttons, shortcuts to the most used functions, which is good. Then you don't have to go around in. 10 menus to do your stuff. You can also set up the buttons on the seat here. You normally where you adjust your, your, your lumbar support, you can set them up to adjust other things, like for instance the thigh support, which here is infinitely adjustable. The same is in the rear seats. It's basically a roll that rolls out the way you want it to go. You can set that up to adjust it in and out here. You can push on and off your massage, you can go to the massaging programs, all of these things you can do here using the buttons on the seat. You can program them, program them in the screen and then you can leave it at that. So the functions you want to use the most you can put it up on physical buttons, which is good. Then you don't have to use the screen as much, which is just what you want. Yeah, that's good. Mm. You can also adjust your fan speed and your temperature from the steering wheel, which is very good. Uh, you probably have it. You can probably use hey, hey, whatever, you know, to, to, to do the same thing if you want to use your voice control. It's, it's a very, very smooth electric drivetrain here. Suspension is comfortable when you want it to be, and it's very sporty and agile when you want it to be that. I mean, it, They've done a proper job of this. The materials are good, the fit and finish in this one is properly good. The Dano, the sound system, as I've been saying, is really, really good. Loud, this is very loud if you want it to be loud, of course it can be. You also have this passenger screen here where the passenger can watch a movie or something. You can't see it. You can see the screen, but it's blacked out. So. It's, uh, I know Jaguar Land Rover did something similar. 10, 12 years ago or something like that. So it's nothing, it's not a new technology, but I've never seen it before and it's done really well. You have space here with the cleverly hinged lid here. There's a big, big room down here. 
and then you have somewhere beneath beneath here which is good that's where you also have your your usb power sockets they're a little bit fiddly to get to but that's about it it has vehicle to to load they they're waiting for the adapter i think that's that's what they said the adapter is it, it's it's uh it's not ready yet but they're waiting on it but it has the ability like all other chinese car cars of course considering the price starts at under 50,000 euros, I think most of this equipment with the the, uh, the uh, reclining rear seats and all of the other stuff, and most of it is standard and it's just wow. If you want, you know, like I said, if you want a comparable car from other brands, then it probably will cost more than this. If the only worry you have is that the position of the steering wheel is a little bit off and you want more reach on it and that the uh, the, the cup holders in the rear seats are a little bit flimsy I mean, those are the two biggest biggest negatives you find in the car well you know then yeah Chinese massage it's so much you know tougher than any than the other massage you get in the other in the, in the European car. Now it's been on a quiet road with low speed limits. We're doing 281 watt hours. Big mirrors, by the way. Not very good for aero, but very nice for seeing what's behind you. Which is good. I think the car needs big mirrors. But speaking of this noise of it, these are frameless doors. They've done a proper job on the noise insulation bit because I just hope x survive survives because let's face it, I'm not selling that many cars. To sum up that, I have now delivered the car and it's been a few days. I was charging it and it charges so fast. It's supposed to do 300 kilo, kilowatts, this thing, and it's it um, even at 50%, it does 200-210 kilowatts and that was on a very subpar preheat session as well it charges quickly it can do around uh, 350-400 kilometers on a mediocre day like we had with around 10 degrees outside so I'm sure it can get around 500-550 kilometers at least in moderate speed at summer temperatures and considering the price of it and the equipment levels and the sound system, it's really well executed and it's a decent car for the money. It's what Xpeng has created on the speed it has learned to do this. Remember this this company is barely ten years old. It's really impressive. It really is. So if you need a big car, you want it to be electric and and you wanted to use moderate amounts of energy then try the Xpeng G9 thanks to Jensen and Shelley Holm for lending me the car and thanks to you for watching and I do hope you like the video do subscribe and leave a comment and all the usual stuff and I'll see you in another video take care bye bye